For really wild food, you need a real wilderness, and there isn't a lot of that left. But here in the highlands of Scotland, we've got just about the nearest thing to it. This is home to the grouse and the red deer, expensive quarry for exclusive sportsmen. So it isn't for me. But there is another wilderness where the food is still completely free. to run out around here, for a while at least, is heather. Scotland has over six million acres of it. It's not of much interest to the cook, but for the brewer, it offers some interesting possibilities. And I'm going to investigate those possibilities now. A tough job. Someone's got to do it. My tutor in the art of beer making is aptly enough called Bruce. And he's not Australian either. So what have we got here? Malted barley, milled malt, which we're going to use to um, be the basis of our beer. It's like a flour mixed with husk, OK, as you can see, quite coarsely ground. So this is your basic starting point for any beer? This is the raw material, yeah. This is the one that gives you the alcohol and gives you the texture. So we just make this into a nice porridge? Yep. Takes you back to your sand pit, this does, not it? Exactly, back to my sand pit. Pour the rest of that water on the top of this. And we'll put it on to warm up. As it warms up, all the starches that are in there will turn into sugars. We mustn't let it go above about 70 degrees C. And how do we know when it's done? Well, best to put the lard on the top. That's what the lard's for. That's what you bought this yeah. for. I wonder what that was doing. So I'd usually want to squeeze a bit of that out and throw it on the surface. It'll tell us when the top of the malt has got to 60 degrees C because the lard will, will melt. What now? I suppose we ought to go and get some heather. Lovely. The basket. <coughs> got a knife? <coughs> we have a nice one. We have this. Prime specimen. Yes. For our modest five-gallon brew, we, we need one yeah. basket of heather flowers. But Bruce is trying to revive the tradition of heather ale on a commercial scale and he employs a gang of itinerant pickers to supply the sackfuls of heather he needs. Would you do it in a particularly limited location or do you go all over for it? We have to go all over because of the way that it flowers. It starts down south in Ayrshire, in Kintyre, and it flowers like a rash up through Scotland. So you follow it round through the season? Yeah, but the, the bell heather, that's this big purple bloom, comes in first, and then the small lilac one, ling heather, comes in about six weeks later. So, is this uh, starting to do what it should? Yes. <clears throat> well, remember the white fat we put on there? Mm -hmm. It's now gone clear. And oh, that okay. tells us that, that the liquid's at the right temperature. Just taste to see if it's sweet. Hmm. Sweet and, and quite sort of beery, really. Right. It's on the way. The next stage is gleefully messy. The barley husk is removed by straining through a cotton cloth. The liquid is boiled up with the heather flowers and a few sprigs of bog myrtle. After simmering for one hour, it's strained again through more fresh heather. This being Scotland, we don't want to waste a drop. The natural fermentation is started with yeast from a final sprinkling of fresh heather flowers. Bruce is donating this particular brew to the gastro wagon cellar. But the deal is, I'll be paying for it with my labour later in the day. Our new heather picker. After my raspberry jamboree, I'm reporting for heather picking duty. Hey, what? <laughs> you get killed. Um, I thought maybe you could help me out. All I had was a Swiss Army knife and a little basket. I thought it was, might be inappropriate. Yeah. I thought you might laugh at me, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Please equip yeah. him up. 
You can't put today with them. Oh, oh, hey, Ian, 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 look at this. Oh, oh, Woods. Oh, oh, oh. oh. oh wait a minute. Hello, hey, little Ian. How can you pick his nose near the food? My cartwheels, whatever. Yeah, cartwheels, we'll go over there. What is your real name, anyhow? My real name? Oh. It's Hugh McFernley McWhittingstall. Hey. <laughs> and the rest. Oh. Whittington Dickstone. <laughs> is that you? A distant relation. Ah, oh. you're related to Dick Whittington. Right. He was the Kiss Me Hardy fellow. No, no, that was Nelson. Oh, yeah. God, that English history so tricky, isn't it? Scottish history simple, isn't it? You spent the whole time beating up the English. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. We just sing about it. We won once and we wrote a million songs. We That's won right. ten times and wrote one song. <laughs> <laughs> Which song was that? Oh, you, you won't know it. The English came and gave us a trouncin. <laughs> we don't sing it. <laughs> we don't sing it very often. <laughs> it's not written down in folklore, that one. Huh. Is this your, your bag here? That's one of my bags, oh, yeah. That's right. Right. yeah. Well, I think everybody else has met their quota. Yep, want to just load up and head off? So, so. Okay. Do you want anything at last orders then, Hugh? <laughs> Time yeah. you're finished. I have a pint of your finest heather ale, please. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> just the answer I was looking for you. All right, then. If there's any left. Mm. If there's any left by the time you get... In fact, let me pass licensing hours. Save me a thimbleful. Yeah. Bruce and I had agreed a price of two sacks of heather for my beer. This turned out to be not quite the bargain I'd originally thought. And it wasn't until rather late in the day that I caught up with the rest of the crew. Westminster, Mudgies, and you, with with Fernley Whittingstall. Whittingless, Whittington, uh, Now, it's just occurred to me that, um, who you, you're pocking your horn at Westminster, Taxman and Midges. This isn't very friendly, is it? Well, we are, we know we're incredibly friendly to everyone. That's what we're, you know, yeah? Yeah, yeah, what does Pock Mahon actually mean? So we can't see you all the time. We think of you and we hold you in a very special place. <laughs> Which particular place would that be? Uh, oh. 